Hi, my name is Sierra Wilson with Dr. Betsy Little's Research Methods course in Psychology. My partner and I decided to do research into the effect daily exercise has on short-term memory. And I'm the partner, hi, I'm Corinne LaTulip, and we wanted to do this experiment to see if exercise actually does improve the memory recall function. We wanted to test to see if doing a minimum of 30 minutes of consecutive exercise a day for a week will actually improve your memory and this is how we did it. Our research study had a total of 35 willing participants of at least 18 years of age who were debriefed on the entirety of the study. The project debrief that was sent out to participants before they agreed to participate in the study is as follows. Thank you to everyone willing to participate in Corinne and Sierra's research project for Dr. Betsy Little's Psychology 230 Research Methods class at Palomar College. We would like to assure you that the information used in this study is for research purposes only and that the information will not be shared outside of this class. We are going to do a pre-memory test on Monday, April 20th via Zoom or FaceTime to start the week of the research process. The memory test will be using a list of words to see how many words you can remember in a short amount of time. Then we will be testing how many you can recall from that list. After the memory test, we will explain what to do throughout the week. Exercise-wise, we would like you to complete at least 30 minutes of any type of concentrated exercise to later mark down in the survey at the end of the week. Then, after the completion of the week, the following Monday, April 27th, to do a post-memory test. Also, at the end of the week, we will be doing a survey over Google Forms where you can track the exercise that you have completed during the week and also answer some questions that we have for you. Please fill out the survey the best of your ability, depending on what type of exercise you feel you did during the week. If at any time the study feels uncomfortable or you do not wish to continue, let us know and we will make adjustments to our calculations. Thank you for your participation, Corinne and Sierra. This was a convenient sample made up of the available friends and family of the researchers. And in the next couple images, some of the results say that there are 37 responses, but that is only because Sierra and I both tried the survey to make sure it worked and so that our participants could input their data correctly. 21 of the participants were female, with the remaining 14 being male. There is a little unbalance between the ratio of female to male. Obviously, there are more female participants than there are male participants. Originally, we wanted to try to have an equal playing field so that we could eliminate gender bias, but since most of the participants were just people that we had in contact with, we just needed the basic minimum amount of participants, which was 30, to have a normal study. So once we got over the minimum requirement, we decided just to keep going with the study and not worry about the gender bias. This would only have been a problem if the men had exercised way more than the women had, then that would have caused the gender bias, but in this study, that did not happen. 78% of our participants were aged 18 to 30. Participants were contacted through various forms of media, such as phone call, video call, or email, and all participants were informed they had the freedom to remove themselves from the study at any time. This is an important part of the project debrief because later in the study, we ended up having two participants injure themselves and so they had to withdraw from the study and they couldn't continue. It is important to have a good line of communication with your participants and the debrief shows them exactly what they are getting themselves into and if they are going to be willing to participate in your research study. The materials used for this research assignment were all technological advances. Due to the coronavirus and our class being moved online, we had to rely on the technology that we had to get the information of our study out to our participants. Like Sierra had mentioned, we used Zoom calls, FaceTime, emails, and also phone calls to contact our participants and to see if they were willing to participate in our study. Other materials included both of the word lists that we use for the pre-test and the post-test, and then using a pen and paper to record how many words the participants could recall from both tests. Another material used in this study was SPSS to document 
and record the data that we had gathered from the pre-test and the post-test. This was one of the main component materials because without the SPSS, we could not have used it to compare the pre-test recall numbers to the post-test recall numbers. The SPSS was used to get the means and the standard deviations and the total significance of our study. Finally, we made a Google Sites survey to monitor what the participants had done throughout the week and that we could use the data from the survey to help us in our study. The first thing that was seen from the opening of the survey is this little description about what the survey entitles and that it is for our research project and that the information will not be used or shared outside of this class and this research project. Participants were also reiterated that their willingness to participate in this research study was very much appreciated and that this research study could not have happened without their participation. To carry out our research, we first asked our convenience sample if they were willing to participate in our study, which would consist of seven consecutive days of at least 30 minutes of exercise, two free recall memory tests, and a survey. There were no requirements for what type of exercise the participants were to perform, just that they report the type in the survey at the end of the week. Those who agreed to participate in our study were sent a proper debrief before the start of the study. On day one, before any exercise was performed, the short-term memory of our participants was tested through a 15-word free recall test. For the next seven days, participants performed various levels of exercise for at least 30 minutes and recorded the specifics in our survey. On day seven, after the final workout, participants' memory was once again tested with a different free recall test of 15 different words. After the completion of the week, participants used the survey to document and record what they had done throughout the week. The survey asked participants what type of exercise they had completed out of four categories, balance, aerobic, flexibility, and strength. Then in the survey, participants were asked for how long or the duration of the time they had spent doing each exercise per day. Finally, participants were asked to rate their level of intensity by using the Borg's scale of intensity, which was listed at the top of the survey, to monitor and to determine what type of exercise they did and what intensity they felt like they had completed. This was an important part of the survey because each type of activity that a person did could be different from another. Like if a marathoner went to run a mile run, it probably wouldn't have been that difficult. But if a person who doesn't exercise very often, like myself, went to run a mile run, that would have been on the extreme side because I'm not trained in running. By using the Borg scale of intensity, each participant could monitor and record what they felt their intensity of each exercise was that they performed during the week. Getting to the statistical information for this research project, we ran a SPSS related samples T to test the amount of words recalled from the pretest and relate them to the answers from the post test and the number of words recalled. The SPS data showed that our pretest treatment had a mean of 6.4 words recalled and our post treatment had a mean of 7.78 words recalled. This means, <laughs> get it? Means. This means that our data was significant and that our hypothesis was correct, that doing a minimum amount of exercise a day for a week will improve the short-term memory recall function. While the results of our study are quite pleasing, there were some limitations. Due to COVID-19, we were forced to choose participants from our personal lives who have personal connections with us. This, however, should not have created any sort of response bias, as the results of the free recall tests cannot be faked. Had we been able to sample the public, we may have had a bigger sample size and therefore more accurate results. However, our N of 35 was enough to have a normal bell curve study. A second limitation to our study came in the specifics of our research. Participants were asked to classify their exercise under four categories with five different intensity ratings. Moderate aerobic exercise performed for an average of 30 minutes was the most common daily exercise routine reported. However, even by using the Borg scale to rate workout intensity, there may have been variations between each participant's perception of the workout or rating. In further research, it would be interesting to focus more specifically on what type of exercise performed 
and for exactly how long gives the most benefit to short-term memory. It would have been nice to do this study in the real world and face-to-face -face with our participants, but we are very thankful for the technological advances that we have today so that our study could still take place. Another complication with this research study happened with the participants. I had asked a couple of family members if they were willing to participate in this study, and at first they had said yes and they had agreed, but later on throughout the week, they ended up injuring themselves and so they had to withdraw from the study. They were both fine. One of them actually just had hurt their knee and the other one had hurt their back so they couldn't continue doing the exercise during the week. This caused a complication because the data that I had already recorded for them for the pretest, they wouldn't have a post test. So they had to be withdrawn from the entire study altogether, but that was okay because we already had enough participants to keep the study going. Our study was actually a mock study from Dr. Santa Stroh. She did a similar study like this where she monitored the effect of exercise on memory during a six week long period. Unlike Dr. Stroh's study, our study only lasted for a week-long period, and our study was a virtual study instead of actually having participants go into a gym and work out at the same time and pace to be monitored and observed for the research method process. Another difference from Dr. Stroh's study was that we were testing memory recall function, and she was testing if verbal recall was going to be different or not, but based on the amount of exercise that her participants had done. In conclusion, the results from our survey and our participants, we'd asked them if they felt healthier for exercising every day, and 89.2% said that yes, they did. And then we also asked if the study provided them the motivation to exercise, because everyone should exercise because it's good for them. 64.9% said it did. And then the last question was, did you feel that your memory had improved with the study? And 40% said yes. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed.